All right, welcome back, guys. My name is William. Always here with I Man from the Block Runner. What's up? What's up? All right, so All right, no podcast today, dude. We got bigger things to worry about. Dude. Absolutely. We yep. got fucking Gert mooning. Gert and why GRT or the graph is going to be bigger than than Link, or at least I'm speculating. Um, yeah, I mean, I I, I could. I can't. I don't know if I'm mentally equipped to debate you on that topic. I'm more here just to long for like your your to siphon some of your knowledge. On yeah, this. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so we were. So why do people think that Link is going to be, or sorry, that the graph is going to be bigger than Link? And so let's just take a look at the charts. So when the graph launched, it went. It started from you know roughly twenty five cents and went all the way to let's say ninety seven cents. Yeah. And then it and then it sort of corrected for a few months, and then now it's it's come back alive. Um, it's really and, been a few months. I think it's just been like a month, right? Like one month, just December twentieth. Yeah, it's been a month. You're right, exactly a month. Perfect. Yeah. So, uh, and then let's take a look at Link. And so this is the weekly chart, and I showed you the day chart on the graph. And from its inception at twelve cents, it went as high as fifty one cents, and then it corrected. Um, over what is it so that's october september to november so that's a month right there that's what mm -hmm. chain link did mm -hmm. and then uh after bitcoin popped that was its all-time high of a dollar 40 cents and then it corrected for several years until 2019 when it got back up to its all-time high yeah. um <clears throat> but the point is is that if the graph is going to have this similar trajectory then you know that's something to pay attention to. And it's people using Chainlink or developers using Chainlink. It's the same degree of usage that the graph is, is having at this moment. So that's why we're looking at it. Yeah, basically because of its fundamental nature to blockchain development, right? Yeah. But I don't know if it's necessarily going to mimic like, you know, exactly what Chainlink did because I think both of these projects were introduced into the market at different phases of the cycle, you know? Right now we're at such an early stage of the altcoin cycle. Chainlink kind of emerged towards the tail end of 2017 cycle. It so did. it kind of was like overshadowed a little bit by a lot, you know, just the nature of what was going on at the time. Everything was fucking popping off, you know? Yeah. So it was kind of easy to, you know, while everyone was tunnel vision on, you know, blockchain 3.0, whatever was buzzing at the time, it definitely wasn't Oracle's. Yeah, like, for sure. <laughs> You know, the crypto space was definitely did not have a hard on for oracles yet until yeah. like DeFi started to emerge, I guess, because that's whenever you started to see projects actually utilizing oracles, you know, and it started to make sense. And that's when the price started to rise. Right. So that's exactly right. So, yeah. So what what the hell is the graph? Yeah. Well, what the fuck is Gert, dude? Yeah. So uh, so the graph network consists of indexers, curators and delegators. So what we were talking about earlier is that. The graph right now is using centralized servers to provide information to other projects uh, like Uniswap and Decentraland and all these. And uh, and so what they're doing now is they're decentralizing everything. And so to decentralize, you have to have a bunch of actors in the network to do certain functions of what the graph does. So they split those actors up into what they call indexers, curators, and then delegators. And uh, I think if you get into the nitty gritty, there's actually a few more entities involved in here. Uh, but these are the main ones that you might be interested in. So, so what is an indexer? So indexers are node operators in the graph network that stake graph tokens in order to provide indexing and query processing service. So if you don't know what indexing means, think of a, think of a book. When you open up that book, the first thing you look at is the index. And the reason you look in the index is to see what sort of content that's in the book. Mm. And so the same thing is happening when you index blockchain data. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like a short uh, order of information that you might need or that this indexer provides um, in order to extract information from all the data that's on the blockchain. Mm. And so that same functionality is happening here. And all that functionality is going to be happening through this node, this server that's on the network, collecting all this information. Mm -hmm. So indexers earn curry fees and indexer rewards for their services. So that's their job is to provide this information in a, in a quick way. 
mm-hmm. then we have GRT that is staked and the protocol is subject to a thawing period and can be slashed if indexers are malicious and serve incorrect data to applications or if they index incorrectly. So, so this now that's in, so I wonder how that goes down. Is it is it is is simple as like the system assumes you're not doing your job as an indexer very well because you're not getting queried enough. So over time, like the state GRT that you have, it starts to diminish. Is that how it works? Well, I think uh, curators are. So we'll we'll talk about that in a second. But essentially, okay. essentially, the more higher quality that your information is, the more that it has the potential to get queried and therefore collect yeah. fees. Yeah. So th- that's that's the assumption. Then, if you're not providing that quality content, right. you're providing either fake fake news that's or right. something <laughs> that the, the ecosystem deems not worthy of that's right. query, then I guess there's a punishment for that. That's the whole reason for, you know, in order for you to be involved in this ecosystem, you have to s- stake some skin in the game, right? Because exactly. there's something you could lose. Yeah, you, you get slashed if you're acting maliciously. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense, man. <laughs> yeah. And so the main point of an indexer is that it's the node in the network. So it's, it's the... Yeah the horsepower that allows developers to extract information quickly. So yeah. to you, you need to have a pretty good computer or a server to run, to be an indexer. Mm, interesting. So there's also like hard care, hardware requirements too. Then. Right. Absolutely. Curators. So curators are subgraph developers and curators deposit GRT tokens into a bonding curve to signal on a specific subgraph and earn a portion of the query fees for the subgraph they signal on. So incentivizing the highest quality data uh, sources. So think about how in a centralized, you know, service that the graph would otherwise be providing Mm -hmm. is they hire their own developers and they build their own subgraphs of data that they think that the community is going to want to get. And uh, so, so there's, there's a limiting factor to how many subgraphs you're in-house developers can get and so decentralizing it opens up to you know the the network of the world of developers to make their own subgraphs because they might be more involved in a community that might need this data than you know someone somebody that works at the graph Mm. so there's benefits to decentralizing a lot of this stuff and so due to decentralizing you have to incentivize people to create these subgraphs because if they don't create the subgraphs, then there are no APIs to call to get the data that the developer might need for their project. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're saying like if, if there's like a, an innate, <clears throat> like let's, let's call it demand, I guess, for certain data that's on this market, mm-hmm. then by nature there, that's the incentive itself for, you know, there's, there's a competitive element in this ecosystem, right? Right. That's where the curators come in. Right, right, right. Okay. So, and then here it says curators use their knowledge of the Web3 ecosystem to assess which subgraphs are high quality. So if you take us, for example, if we get our developer to make a subgraph of our project called MetaZone, mm-hmm. it would be the highest form of quality because, I mean, we built a thing, right? And we have our our developer making the subgraph of our data so that anybody can query versus just some random person on earth who says, I like MetaZone and I want to create a subgraph. His data may not be as thoughtful as ours would. And so people would prefer to query from our subgraph that we made versus some third party. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Because... What if that's not always the case? <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's not the case. I mean, let's yeah. say that an in-house developer is making a subgraph that's not as detailed or doesn't have all the information that's needed. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's totally possible too. But that's but that's the beauty of this in the sense that 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 market opportunity is always present for any developer exactly. out there. Exactly. So this is kind of like an emerging gig economy ecosystem for for there any developer, right? There's tons of developer resources outside of like the traditional, you know, developer eco chambers we're used to like Silicon Valley and whatnot. You know, there's, there's people all over the world who might not have access to, you know, providing value to like, you know, the internet 
as much as they could if right. they were like located in a certain geography. So this is kind of like giving an opportunity for them to kind of pick and choose what it is they want to, you know, delegate their time towards and provide a service to. Yeah, that that's a good point. I mean, if if there's a developer out there that's part of all these different ecosystems. Yeah, let's, say, let's say Bitcoin, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you could imagine the competition for like being the number one indexer for Bitcoin data. Oh, absolutely, you know, like, dude. And and there's no like Bitcoin. I mean, there are, there is a Bitcoin organization, but there's no like Bitcoin company, right? That that you should look to to be like, oh, this is the de facto standard of data that we should all be relying Excellent on. Excellent point. Excellent point. Yeah, re really, it's just we don't really know how the like end structure is going to turn out like to all these, uh, these different actors in this ecosystem. Right. That's an excellent point, especially like you're saying, Bitcoin is a completely decentralized network and there is no one source of information that you can kind of pin to. So now it's up to this competition to provide the best quality data. And the, and the, the subgraph that's the best quality data is the one that gets queried the most and therefore fees get distributed to the curator. Which brings us to our next and final piece over here is the delegators, which would be you and I, and probably most of you who are watching this video, is that individuals who delegate stake to indexers to contribute to securing the network without running a graph node themselves. So that's what a delegator is. So okay. so we delegate to indexers yeah, yeah, yeah. that we think are going to be queried the most and therefore collect the most fees, which then distribute those fees to delegators. Interesting. So these are like the non-technical actors in the ecosystem, right? It's more like you're just, it's like a rep, this is the reputation system right? for the actual indexers. You know, indexers. Yeah. Yes. Uh, basically the more delegators you have assigned to your index, the higher like five-star rating you have, you know, these are the Yelp That's reviewers. Right. Of yeah. The ecosystem. And <laughs> you have to be careful here because uh, this, this particular, uh, right up here by the graph, it explains like how do you select the best indexer to get the highest ROI on your delegation? Yeah. And it's extremely complicated. Um, it's yeah. not, it's not exactly straightforward on how you would do that. But most yeah. importantly here for the delegator is that you cannot be slashed for any bad behavior. Um, and so the only bad behavior that could occur is through an indexer or curator so they can be slashed. Uh, but they're also staking tokens. So there's an incentive for themselves not to do any malicious data because they could lose money. Correct. Um, and then I guess you as a delegator, if you, I guess if you don't do your due diligence, right. And then you, you delegate to a malicious um, indexer. Yeah. You just won't make any fees. You just won't make any fees, but there's no risk of like your, your stake being. Oh, absolutely not. Or anything like that. No, absolutely okay. not. Yeah. And then, so even if uh, you find a good indexer, you, it, it's there's a high chance they could be over delegated, and so yeah. even if you delegate to an over delegated indexer, <clears throat> the amount of fees that you receive is almost nothing. So there's no point in delegating into the best indexers either. So you have to do some due diligence and some research on what what to do. And so I I want to do a video where it kind of breaks down how to do this properly, because everything I've seen has been extremely complicated. Yeah, of and course it's just not good enough to really comprehend and understand like what the best strategy is for selecting a good indexer from an ROI standpoint. Yeah. Cause that's why you would do it. Otherwise, you know, why yeah, do it? That's your incentive to do it, dude. Like I'm sure this is not fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Figuring Maybe it's out. fun to some people, but it definitely the incentive to do it is, is to earn. Right. Right. For sure. And another thing to keep in mind is there's a delegation fee of 0.5%. So the example they give here is a thousand GRTs. If you stake a thousand GRTs to an indexer, it costs you five GRTs to actually stake it. So you have to calculate how long it is it's going to take for you to recover those five GRTs um, as part of your you know ROI calculations. So and this then, is just to prevent like too much. Yeah, moving around money. Too much. Yeah, too much flipping and hopping and stuff yeah okay and cool. and last thing is there's a 28 day unbonding period so let's say you stake for you know two or three months on a given indexer and you want to take it out yeah it, there's a cool down period of 28 days so even more <laughs> yeah even more yeah exactly so they're really trying to 
hamper movement, you know, I guess just to stabilize things, you know, not have so much uh, ins yeah. and outs, I guess. There's too much, too much uh, volatility, I guess, in the network. Yeah. And, and it gives you the incentive to be like, hey, as soon as you stake, you're committed to at least 28 days with this indexer. Yeah. So exactly. it, it gives you the incentive to do your research to make sure that you are going to make an ROI because otherwise you're stuck there for 28 days and your, and your money's locked up. Yeah. Wow. So it's, they, it's I mean, it's, think it's, about what they've done here, dude. It's like they've, they've taken a centralized service, which is extremely common, right? Amazon web services does this already and they do it a fantastic job. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're taking that functionality and they're decentralizing it and providing incentives for people within the ecosystem to do the functions that a centralized system would do. Yeah. And to do it, you know, uh, with good behavior. Yeah. Know? Right. Which, Which is that's, that's what, that's what the whole crypto ecosystem is all about. It's just incentivizing good behavior in any ecosystem. Right. 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 But that's what the token economy is for, you know, otherwise like it's just pure every man for himself you know, and usually that human nature takes over in those types of scenarios. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. There's not so much communal, you know, cooperation and whatnot. Yeah. You know? Unless it's absolutely necessary, unless it's to your individual benefit to like, you know, form a collective. Right. Right. But so in today's society, that's not necessarily always the case. So you, there needs to be some kind of monetary, you know, incentive layer to kind of, you know, make this a reality. <laughs> yeah. I, I was just thinking about that. If, uh, you know, this is a good experiment, like from a psychological perspective on incentivizing people to act a certain way in a network. Mm. And, and in this case, they're using money, right? As any other crypto project is doing is they're using money to incentivize good behavior. Mm -hmm. And, and the staking aspect and slashing is to de-incentivize bad behavior yeah, and, and so it's just interesting how providing these game mechanics helps uh, a project like the graph become decentralized. Like that's, it's not just yeah. a technical thing. It's more of like a, a psychological thing. Yeah. And like you said, this is the nature of like uh, the service is no, is no different. Like you said, than like an AWS, you know, like this is something we, we, we take for granted in our day-to-day yeah, -day life you exactly know, like right. all apps are built on this infrastructure but it's like it's things that we don't necessarily pay attention to because we, we really rely on these central yeah. you know authorities to kind of provide us with this data and and we, and we trust the data that is accurate correct and we let them control it and do whatever it is they want with it you know because they own it That's and what's it. cool is we get to participate uh, us as delegators yeah. we we decide like what is good quality information and then we put our money where our mouth is yeah so chain link is essentially just like it's the same ecosystem sort i we're probably gonna have to do a separate video on chain link yeah for sure <laughs> kind of like breaking down but i think it's like the same uh, incentive structure incentive structure but yeah. like in the inverse direction meaning like they're taking off chain data to secure it on chain right that's right right so in order to do that you know once again we need this whole network of actors like working in unison exactly yeah. exactly yeah, yeah so that that will probably be another video but yeah that covers everything we want to talk about for the graph hopefully it makes sense if you have any questions please hit us up in the comment section and uh, like and subscribe and follow us on twitter at the block runner and also at metazone io for our decentraland project and yeah just hit us up and, and uh, chat with us all right we're out Peace. all right see you